In this video, we will talk about task user fields. Click over any task, and if you don't see task properties down here, go to the Windows and click over task properties. Choose user fields tab. You remember that we filled down two text user fields inside Microsoft Project before exporting them to Synchron. So here they are, assembly code and level code. As you remember, we also established codes for resources in Microsoft Excel. Here it is, by concatenating level code and assembly code with the underscore in between. Now let's go to the Synchro and create user field for our tasks. You can make a right click over an empty space and select add user field. For this video, we will create two user fields. And I would like to demonstrate you both interoperability with the Microsoft Excel and creating calculated user field parameter inside Synchro Pro. So the first one, we'll name it as task PBS1. Choose category as task. Its type will be string. And its calculation type will be don't calculate. Let's quickly create another one. Name it task. PBS2, this category is task, type string, and calculation type for this time will be calculate. Click OK. Now go ahead and add this user fields to our task window. Right click, customize columns, go down to user fields, and pull them up after 3D resources. Also, let's bring in our level code and assembly code. You also can change the order of columns by clicking over the heading and dragging them on the left or the right, so their position will change. So the first column you can either fill down manually or with the help of Excel. We just need to copy level code and assembly code to the Excel and concatenate them. Select all the tasks. Copy them as text, paste in Excel. In Excel, let's use our concatenation formula. And let's copy the E column and paste it in the task VBS1. But imagine each time you will receive an updated schedule, you will have to do it again. Much more intelligent way is to create a formula-based user field, which should be scanning specific columns and recalculate values each time automatically. In order to create such a field, go to Navigator and User Fields. You'll notice that Task VBS2 has calculated in the braces, even though its type is string. This allows us to specify a formula for it. Make a right click over its name and see that Edit Formula is active now. As an example, if we make a right click over Task VBS1, the same Edit Formula is not active. Click over Task VBS2 and choose Edit Formula. On the left, you can see Available Syntax and Properties list, Conditions on the right top, and the formula itself below the condition. The condition field is optional one. Available list of syntax is divided by categories. You can expand and select any comment or property or logic. And when you click over any of them, you will see a short description given to each comment. Now let's create a new user field. We are interested to concatenate task user fields. For that, open task user fields category and double click over level code. You see that level code has been transferred to our formula window. So we will use user field value level code plus underscore in quotes, then plus again, and user field assembly code. The formula is ready. So press OK now. Nothing changed because we need to recalculate values for user fields. So press on it now. The appear dialog offer us to select for what user fields the recalculation should be applied, for selected ones or for all user fields, and uh, what user field to take into account. 
task, resource, 3D object or user fields for groups, and the way it should process objects. For now, let's leave all these options as default. Pay attention on the task VBS2 fields. Once we've clicked OK, all the fields have been filled down automatically. Now, if our schedule has been updated and some of the level codes changed, for example, here instead of level 2, we will receive level 5. We simply click over recalculate values and see that changes took place. Not to say the same about task BBS1 that we created inside Microsoft Excel.